Hey everybody, welcome to the History of FMW. This is going to be episode number 28. We're going to be talking about the second half of 2002. So right now, F uh, FMW the, um, had officially folded in February of 2002. Um, in the wake of it, Sh uh, Shoshi Arai, he took his own life. Uh, Koto Fuki went on to start WEW, and Onita also began doing shows. Um, before we begin, Brett, just kind of run us through... What are the working relationships between WEW, the Onita companies, and the other companies at this time? Right now, they're um, they're working together. O o Onita started up a nostalgia promotion, but it's pretty much the same thing as what he was doing under Onita Pro or Project X. Now it's just called Onita FMW. Like I said, it's kind of a nostalgia uh, with the old FMW logo that he... Uh, back like their first FMW logo, um, so it's just Onita working with the WEW guys uh, as far as the talent exchange for their shows, as well as Zero One uh, working with both promotions as well. So those three promotions are kind of all working together as one uh, right now. Um, so um, one guy that uh, he was kind of absent was. Hayabusa, um, and on July third, he uh, he broke his silence. They had a Press a uh, press conference with Mr. Ganosuke and then Jinsei Shinzaki. Uh, what did they announce? So they announced the new creation of the promotion WMF, which is going to be rest stand for Wrestling Marvelous Future. Uh, Ganosuke had decided that he didn't want to just fall in line with just working with WEW. Um, he I've asked him about this. He just he simply just said he uh, wanted to promote. And so he got away from the Fuki promotion. He decided he wasn't going to just uh, work with WEW. So he decided he was going to work his, start his own promotion. And he reached out to all the uh, FMW wrestlers, mostly the younger wrestlers and pretty much told them like, Hey, w let's start up this, you know, I'm going to start up a new promotion and you're going to get pushed. I'm going to focus on you guys, Garuda, Memo Sasaki, going on, you know, we're going to promote you guys as the top guys, whereas with Fuki's promotion, you're going to be below the Kanemuras and, and the you know, the, the storylines uh, that are still going to take place. And, and Ganasuke's thinking is like, wait, WEW is just FMW, and that entertainment style didn't work for FMW. It's not going to work now under a less salary base they're gonna you know under less money so why you know let's try something new and so Ganasuke's thinking is this something new is focusing on the young talent and so he reached out to Hayabusa and contacted him and wanted Hayabusa to be a part of this new promotion and Hayabusa agreed because it's Mr. Ganasuke it's his childhood friend and so they announced a conference that at uh, this press conference that there's you know this new promotion it, it's not going to be a part of it's, it's going to be completely separated from WEW and they're going to run their first show on August 28th at the Differ Araki in Tokyo. So who are the backers and the owners of the company? Uh, so Tetsuya uh, Yamada, who I went over last episode, he actually bought uh, a lot of the FMW footage. Uh, he owns like the Sky Perfect TV, the Direct TV, um, pretty much everything after 1998. He owns that footage so he's obviously an fm a big time fmw fan with some money he works for the lang incorporated company um the ceo of it and so he and mr ganasuke um have worked together where so he's gonna promote the shows he's the financial backer um he pretty much you know technically i guess owns the company but mr ganasuke is gonna be making all the decisions mr ganasuke is gonna be the one promoting the uh, making the matches coming up with the storylines the gimmicks everything like that so mr ganasuke is going to be pretty much running the company but uh tetsuya uh yamada is going to be the financial backer does um hayabusa does he hold any real power in the the company no, so they announced that Hayabusa is going to be the commissioner of WMF. So in storyline, he's making the decisions for like uh, when it comes down to a decision being needing to be made, he's making that decision. And we'll go over that here in a second where he makes a decision uh, as far as the storyline goes. But as far as actually uh, making decisions, not really. He, um, he what they're really bringing him in for is PR, him to do radio 
video interviews to promote the show, uh, promote the shows going out and, you know, because Hayabusa just he can't wrestle, obviously, but he still has the name. He still has the image. And so, you you know, you get a radio interview with him that you can promote him as, you know, Hayabusa is going to be on uh, coming up next to promote the show. You know, that that's going to mean more to um semi you know people that just kind of know wrestling as far as in in the public but if you announce like a mr ganasuke or a mama sasaki is next that's not gonna you know that's not gonna do anything that um people don't you know hayabusa is just a bigger star than anyone else in the promotion so the best way to get him is to just kind of do pr work and and stuff like that so that's what hayabusa is being used for as far as actually working for the company and then to appear on the shows. And, you know, I'm um, sure there's, um, he'll, he does some stuff here um, on a couple of the big shows that probably did help draw some show, draw some people into the show as well. Who are going to be the wrestlers for the company? And uh, what is the relationship like with, between this company and then W E W like, is there any friction or is it very, you know, easy? Okay, so um, the main guys, like I said, Mr. Ganesuke, Mama Sasaki is going to be promoted as the ace. That's the, the He's going to be the focus of the company. But also there's going to be Garuda. He'll be involved. Uh, Hizagatsu Oya. Um, you know, and like I said, some of the younger guys, uh, Satoru uh, Makada, uh, they're going to give him kind of a makeover. Um, as far as the WMF and WEW working, the only thing is, is Tetsuhiro Kuroda, due to loyalty to Hayabusa, has asked Fuki if he could also work for WMF. And Fuki kind of begrudgingly, okay, you can go ahead and do it, fine. But he's he's not a big fan of it. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like this whole WMF um, promotion because Fuki's idea after it closed was, okay, FMW is going to close, but and now I'm going to have my promotion and it's going to be run under me. You know, Fuki didn't really feel that Shoshi Arai was a good businessman. He felt like... Rai kind of is the reason a lot of the decisions Rai made is why the company went under because of his bad business decisions and, and direction and just not, you know, being focused. So Fuki's thinking, okay, I'm going to run the same promotion without a Rai and it's going to be me and I know what I'm doing. And um, yeah, this is going to be a lesser finance company. We're not going to have the, as much money, but I'm also paying the wrestlers less. So this was Fuki's idea of just kind of running FMW again. So when Mr. Ganesuke gets half the roster to pull away, because Gan again, Ganesuke is going, I don't want to run this entertainment wrestling style any again. It didn't work the first time. It's not going to work under a lesser, uh, le under lesser money, you know, so when he pulled away, that took away uh, a majority of the roster. And so Fuyuki now is like, I only have a couple of the key F and W guys, Kanemura, Kuroda, and uh, and just a couple of undercard guys, Shinjuku Shark, Ch Chaco Bob Makai, uh, guys like that. He, you know, so again, he was really upset. So now you have Kuroda, who one of the two top WEW guys, going, I want to work for WMF. Also, well, Fuyuki's not going to go. No, you can't. But he's not a big fan of it. So these two companies are completely separate other, um, other than Kuroda is going to work both companies. So what style are they going to be trying to do and what fan base are they trying to uh, capture? Again, they're kind of just focusing on these are the younger guys. These are going to be good wrestlers. Uh, it's going to be. Um, the, uh, it's going to be a, a different promotion than FMW because it's going to be under the new guys because, again, you know, the – Older guys, well, you don't have Hayabusa anymore. Um, Ganesuke will be there to kind of run the semi-main event matches that possibly will help draw. Um, but the main focus, like I said, will be Mama Sasaki, Garuda, Soldier, uh, Satoru Makada as Soldier. Then he'll bring in um, Michinoku Pro and Toriyuman guys as well you know, onto the shows to help fill them out. So it's going to be good wrestling. It's going to be the young wrestlers. It's not going to be the 35, 30, you know, 30, 35 year old hardcore brawling. And so Ganesuke makes a, a um, a point to mention that this is not going to be a death match promotion. There will not be death matches in this promotion. It is going to be straight wrestling, good wrestling, with younger wrestlers doing great wrestling matches. And then um, one, you know, one question I've got is like, is like, what, you know, when you're trying to make a company from like thin air, where do you get, you know, like, what do they need to get? Do they need, do they need to get the printing presses for the flyers? How are they going to make the merchandise? Where do they get rings? Do you, like, do you know how you assemble this stuff? 
Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's a lot of it is getting the the financial backers. So it really helped that he had um, Lang incorporated at this time, where they're putting all the money into, you know, like like you said, the, the pressers, the ring, all that stuff is getting used up, is is getting financed by this big company. So Ganesuke has the context. I know how to get it. I know who to talk to. I, I reach out to this person, but the money is going in uh, from a company that's sponsoring it thinking this company is going to make us money in the long term. We're just going to have to spend this money now to get money in the long term because this is going to be a financially successful company is what they're thinking. So they're putting all the money in and Ganesuke is getting all the, you know, getting uh, programs, getting uh um, like you said, you know, the ring, just booking the buildings, everything like that. Um, just be able, you know, it's financially supported by Lang Incorporated, but it's Mr. Ganaske and a couple other guys doing all the the, uh, the legwork. All right. So our first show that we're going to go over is going to be on July 14th. Onita ran uh, at the Diffie, the, I'm sorry, the Differ Ariaki Stadium. Uh, if you want to go over that show. Yeah, so... Um, Back in June, um, going back to even the Kawasaki show on May 2nd with Onita feuding with Zero One, um, Onita spitting mist into Hashimoto's face and then throwing a fireball in Otani's face, uh, on Onita, and then the match getting thrown out pretty much. Onita uh, goes to the Zero One show in June backstage and he offered, he wants a rematch with Shinja, Shinya Hashimoto. He want, you know, he sends, gives a letter to Hashimoto, I want a match with you at my Onita FMW show. And Hashimoto is, I'm not having, I'm not wrestling you again. I don't trust you. I don't want anything to do with you. And, you know, you blew mist and threw fire at my guy. <laughs> and so I want, I'm not going to wrestle on your show. And so Onita's getting kind of frustrated and annoyed with Hashimoto and just his attitude about it. Well, while this is going on, Otani sees Onita and starts screaming at him and has to be held back by the Zero One guys. And Otani's going, I'll challenge you. I want a match with you. You threw a fireball at me uh, last month. I want my revenge with you. So Hashimoto agrees, okay, you know, I'm not going to wrestle on your show, but I'll let Otani wrestle on your show so the main um the main matches for um well the main events announced for uh the uh, onita fnw show is onita and tetsuhiro kuroda taking on Shinjiro uh, shinjiro Hunt otani and ryoji sai who is a zero one guy um but a, a couple of the other matches on this show um mitsuhiro matsunaga took on hito in a needles death match um, so there were needles put in these like roses all around the ring for this match. And this is a rematch uh, um, for the May 4th show that Onita had at Corrigan Hall with Ohito uh, and um, Matsunaga. They had a death match on that show. And Matsunaga ended up t submitting while um, doing a torture rack on Hito because he was standing on thumbtacks with his bare feet and he couldn't handle the pain anymore, so he gave up. So this is a rematch. And like I said, there's ne a rose needles in this match. And... Um, Hito ends up uh, sending uh, Matsunaga through a table with the with the rose needles, and so and then there's thumbtacks. Um, eventually, uh, he uh, Matsunaga actually does a cartwheel in the ring with on the thumbtacks and ends up getting the thumbtack stuck in his hand. Um, the finishing spot is Hito getting a barbed wire bat around Matsunaga's uh, throat and then trying to um, choke him out with a sleeper. Um, and so Hito drops back on the uh, into the ring, trying to choke Matsunaga out with the bat. Well, as a result, his his uh, shoulders are down on the mat, and the referee counts three. And so Hito thinks he's won, but actually Matsunaga had gotten the pinfall win. So that was Matsunaga's uh, win, and so both finishes were kind of screwy uh, with this feud. But um, then the second uh, semi-main events, Mats uh, Masato Tanaka and Yoshihiro Sasaki versus Kentaro Kanemura and Chakoba Mukai. Um, this is a WWE versus Zero One match, and um, this one, there's uh, Chakoba Mukai is just he's just not up to being at a, this level of of competition with a Tanaka or a Kanemura. Um, Tanaka and Sasaki. Um, who Yoshihito Sasaki was an FMW dojo guy who had left FMW after it closed down to join Zero One. And um, there was a spot here where uh, Tanaka and Yoshihito Sasaki tried to do the 3D where uh, Sasaki like picks up Mukai and um, 
like uh, Tanaka tries to do the diamond cutter. Well, Shakoba Mukai ends up just the spot gets completely screwed up, and, uh, and Tanaka completely whiffs on catching uh, Mukai by the neck and dropping him down. So t Tanaka looks it, it, it's a completely screwed up spot. They try doing a torture rack spot that gets screwed up afterwards with Mukai. It's just a big mess. Um, before Tanaka would end up finally putting Mukai away uh, with for the win and for the zero one win and then. And um, like I said, the main event, Onita and Kuroda versus Otani and Sai. Um, pretty much the ending spot here. Is, I mean, it's just a brawl. Um, the spot, the ending spot is t uh, Onita spinning mist in uh, Ryuji Sai's face and end up, you know, hitting him with chairs before he, uh, getting the win. Uh, Onita gets the win over Sai. So the Onita team gets an, gets the win over 0-1 on this show. So again, it's just one of these Onita, WEW have kind of now grouped together to take on 0-1. Now, um, one thing that we never really went over is, you know, what you know, what exactly is um, Zero One, and you know, what is their style, and you know, who owns them. So um, back in 2000, Shinya Hashimoto had come up with the idea. He was working for New Japan, and he had came up with the idea for having a sub brand of. Of, of New Japan called Pro Wrestling Zero, and New Japan turned that idea down. And it would be, you know, Hashimoto as the ace and have a couple of the, uh, the New Japan guys wrestling. So um, uh, eventually, uh, Hashimoto would actually be let go by New Japan. Uh, at the time, most people believed that, that it was all a work and this is just New Japan's sub promotion um, and they're just going to run big shows. But I mean, apparently, it ended up being legit. I, I I'm probably not the best person as far as New Japan knowledge goes, but this is what I've um, been able to pick up over the years is, you know, they actually did let Hashimoto go. And so he started up this promotion in 2001, 01, 2001. And, um, Pretty much at the beginning was going to be we're going to have big dream matches. You know, Hashimoto and Masao are going to fight each other in a tag match. Um, you know, just kind of big style matches, big dream matches on big shows. And and then eventually they um, brought in a bunch of the American wrestlers from the NWA or UPW at the time. And so it's just kind of a mixture of everything. Onita has actually compared zero one to FMW at the beginning, because it was so just all these different styles. You had shoot fight matches, um, you know, kickboxers, um, you know, just regular wrestlers. I mean, a lot of what just Shinya Hashimoto wanted in wrestling, which was again, you know, just kind of le legitimacy, uh, real badasses fighting in, you know, work matches. So at this time, just zero one is just all over the place as far as different styles. There's high flying matches. There's um, shoot file st style matches. There's just regular wrestling matches. There's hardcore matches. So it's just all over the place at this time. The beginning, the first couple of years. All right. Um, yeah, and and I just want to say, like at this time, I mean, um, Zero One was they were great for like hardcore wrestling, for brawling, for stiff stuff. I love Zero One at this time period, big time. Um, so okay, so that's gonna take us to the next show on July twenty second, two thousand two. Wew ran a uh, show. Uh, if you want to, and 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 just to uh, paint the the you know the background, uh, Fuki had re had had a retirement match in Noah a couple mo months prior. Um, so, uh, what happened in WEW on, uh, July 22nd? So, um, WEW ran a show back in June 30th and it didn't do very well. Um, you know, again, going back into the Fuyuki kind of thought, Hey, we're going to just have the FNW guys, Ganosuke, uh, uh Mama Sasaki. We're going to just build up at the FNW guys in my promotion, in my name. Well, then a bunch of the roster left. And so Fuyuki kind of had to scramble and got in contact with, um, Kai and Tai Dojo, Taka Michinoku's promotion. Uh, DDT, um, and so, you know, to fill out the undercard, and so these shows aren't doing very well. Um, you know, this show is announced at 1750 at Corbin Hall, and it's empty. It's it's probably, it's a lot less than that, I'm guessing. It's, you know, it's it's not a filled up building by any means. So, F anyway, so Fuyuki kind of sees this as, all right, we need a draw. We need me. I need to come back. I'm, I'll be a draw. And, and to a certain extent, he's right in the sense of, well, Fuki is a name. Number two, um, you know, this is his fan base. The WEW guys, or the WEW roster and the promotion, it what 
it, what it what took was the you asked about the WMF guys and, and and who they were building towards. WMF was building towards new fans, bringing in new guys or new new young guys to bring in new fans. Fuki's idea was we're gonna keep this FMW fan base that was there at the end because if they're you know if they just followed this promotion along, well. All these guys are making, you know, less money. Kanemar is not making one hundred twenty thousand dollars anymore. Um, you know, there's no guys. Uh, you know, there's we're not paying Hayabusa over a hundred thousand. All these guys are making less money. So yeah, we'll have less money to work with. And but uh, but if we can just run successful Corrigan Hall shows, this can be a successful, com you know, promotion based off just the W, uh, the based off the old FMW Corrigan Hall shows at the end. Um, that's his thought process. And but again, the FMW, a lot of the FMW guys left, so a lot of the fans left. But there are still some fans that enjoy this entertainment style type of wrestling, and that's what WEW is to cater towards. But anyway, again, this is obviously not working because this building is kind of empty. So Fuki says, well, I'll help build, uh, draw the show by coming out of retirement. I'll wrestle a match. He, and, um, but Masawa hears this and goes, no, you can't wrestle. You just came out. Of, we just had a retirement ceremony. Pro Wrestling Noah just had a retirement ceremony in April for you. And But Fuki's thinking, well, I really do have cancer. I mean, it's not like I'm making this story. You know, I didn't lie to you. I really do have cancer, and if I can wrestle, I want to wrestle um, and to help my promotion out. And, you know, it won't be much of a match uh, or anything like that, but Misawa's like, no, you cannot wrestle. You cannot make us look bad by just coming out of retirement three months later. And so Fuyuki goes, fine, you know, I won't wrestle. You know, I mean, Fuyuki respects Misawa. Obviously, he's not going to make Misawa look bad or upset Misawa. And so Misawa agrees, okay, you know what? Because you're not going to wrestle, I'll send one of my guys, Mikado Hashi, to the show. And so Mikado Hashi takes on Hito on the show. And again, this goes back, the match was originally supposed to be Fuyuki versus Hito, um, set back on June 30th because Hito had kicked Fuyuki low. Um, so this was kind of supposed to be Fuyuki's revenge in a, in a short little crappy match, but it was going to be Fuyuki's return. Well, instead, Mikado Hashi has a match with Hito, and of course, the Noah guy is going to beat the WEW guy, so Mikado Hashi ends up getting the win over Hito. Um, the main event is Tetsuhiro Kuroda, Taka Michinoku, and Takashi Sasaki taking on Kentaro Kanemura, uh, Masio Orahara, and uh, Chakoba Mukai. Um, again, just Chakoba Mukai just kind of is sticking out here. He's just, he, you know, he's just not made for wrestling. And, you know, he's got a good look, good body, but he just wasn't a talented wrestler. Um, but, you know, so he kind of sticks out and kind of brings the match down. Um, this match isn't great by any means. There's a the brawl kind of, uh, around the building. Um, there's a spot where um, Orahara tries to pile drive Kuroda through a table um, outside the ring, and the table doesn't break. And so then Kanemura has to di um, climb up the stage and dive off the stage and uh, pretty much just dr uh, send Kuroda through the table. Uh, but eventually, uh, Kuroda would end up getting the win over Mukai, and so um, the the baby faces have won. The baby face side is going to be, you know, Kuroda's the main baby face with T Taka Michinoku from Kaintai Dojo and Takashi Sasaki from DDT. So, um, speaking of that, we never really talked about him, but um, who was S Sasaki before joining WEW? He had started up in 1996 under a really small promotion, IWA uh, Kak uh, Kakukazagi. Um, uh, you know, that's low, low, uh, I mean, that Poison Sawada type, uh, you know, gim uh, snake gimmick type matches where the, or Mecha Monkey or Mecha Mummy and, uh, you know, even just like Survival Tobita, just comedy, low rent uh, really small buildings, maybe not even having a ring. So he just kind of started up, um, you know, working those type of shows. And eventually, um, after a couple of years, he ended up joining up with DDT, which at this time is still very small promotion. 2002 it was starting to grow. Like I said, they were able to run a Corrigan Hall show back in May, but they're still running nightclubs. Um, and so they picked up um, Takashi Sasaki and, Jint and Jintaro um, as well, who were teaming up in DDT, and they end up uh, kind of coming up with an agreement to work uh, WEW promo uh, the WEW promotion uh, regularly, and they would eventually become WEW wrestlers. 
Um, real quick note, uh, as we do this, uh, Freedoms just ran a show in Shizuoka, and it was inside like an office building with no ring, and Sasaki was in a business outfit fighting another business guy, so not much has changed. But anyway, um, one thing I'm curious about, how is Hayabusa's uh, health, his uh, family, his finances, and his uh, spirit doing? Um, so right now he's currently – he's living in the Moriyama uh, Medical Center, which is there to specifically help him, you know, relearn how to walk. Um, so he's going through – you know, he's right now just stay, just pretty much living there, uh, but he's miserable living there. Um, you know, he has – a, a, uh, someone that works there is um, a big time Hayabusa fan. Um, so he has that companion there. But again, you don't know anyone. It's pretty much just living. You're, you're not with your family. You're, you're not getting to really be outside in the world. You're just living in this hospital pretty much in this medical center, trying to relearn to walk. You know, I mean, you just have like a hospital bed as uh, a hospital room as, you know, where you're living at and stuff. And just at, over time, you just get really stressful. And so this is the most stressful of Hayabusa's life. He is – Hayabusa had always been a smoker, but he is going through packs and packs of cigarettes every day. And, I mean, I always – you know, like I said, Hayabusa had been a smoker for years. But I remember seeing pictures of Hayabusa smoking around this time period, and I'm thinking, like, that can't be good for him with this, his situation and everything. Um, so he's right now really miserable, not getting to see his wife every day, not getting to see his kids. Um the only time he's really getting to go out is for these WMF appearances, either for a show or for, like I said, a radio appearance, something like that. Um, financially, um, Hayabusa is not doing too well either. I mean, this is taking up a lot of money living there. And um, so right now, uh, and I may mention, you know, he was uh, – Arai had promised him that he would be insured after uh, he, his injury. When FNW closed down, um, it, it, he ended up losing that insurance money. And so the money ended up having to go through him and his wife, their personal money, to be for him to be able to live there, for him to be able to re, uh, rehab, to be able to try and relearn to walk. Um he had to, you know, pretty much go all the money that he had saved up or his wife had saved up. And so there um, – and we'll go over it probably in an episode – next episode or two. You know, there's big-time financial stress issues as a result, and he ends up screwing up um, the process, trying to get money. Um, and so it's it's a big headache right now. And so he's, you know, he's all smiles with the camera and positive attitude. But right now is probably one of the lowest times in Hayabusa's life, um, you know, n not, just right now, just not happy just with his situation. Again, you know, you're away from your family and kids. You're away from what you've been doing. You're just living in a hospital room. But um, I also wanted to make mention um, in July 2002 when Ganesuke had gotten, um, you know, Hayabusa to agree to join WMF, uh, randomly one – in the middle of the night at 1.30 a.m., uh, Hayabusa is just in his hospital room when Koto Fuki just walked right in. And Fuki tells Hayabusa, you know, I was feeling sick, so I just came into the hospital late. There's – there, you know, because there was no traffic, so I just came in, check up. I'm not doing too well with you know with my cancer and everything, um, but I want to know: Did Mr. Ganesuke persuade you to join WMF instead of WWE? Fuki's still bitter about that because Hayabusa had promised Fuki right after FNW closed if he would join his promotion. Well, Hayabusa, thinking there's only going to be one promotion, said, "Sure, I'll join. You know, I'll join what is going to be the next FNW." Well, now with Mr. Ganesuke, and this ended up set Hayabusa also that Ganesuke kind of split from. Uh, the Fuki group, just in the sense of now, you know, it really broke up FMW as a result. And now that there's two FMWs and, you know, again, Hibus is going to side with Mr. Ganesuke, but anyway, um, Fuki goes, you know, did Ganesuke persuade you? And Hibus just doesn't even respond, just doesn't say anything. So then Fuki walks over to Hibus' bed and just tells him, I only have six months to let uh, a six months left to live uh, because of my cancer. And, and then he asks, are you going to walk again? And Hayabusa goes, I don't know. And then Fuki goes, Well, you know what? I don't have much time to live, but you do. So make the best of out of make the best of it um, before you walk out, okay? And then Fuki ends up leaving. And so 
you know, again, this is just, you know, randomly in the middle of the night one night. And so, again, Fuki is really upset um, as far as Hayabusa leaving. But, um, you know, again, Hayabusa is, you know, he's keeping himself busy. He's working on an autobiography at this time. And, again, just he really is trying his best to relearn to walk. And um, going into the WMF show, he wants to show the fans that he can stand up at this point. So he's really training hard. He's dedicating a lot of time to being able to just stand up to show the fans so so he can impress everybody. But um, as far as just his emotional spirits, it's, it's not great right now. Um, so, okay. Uh, so that's just emotional. I'm sorry. So uh, from July... 28th to August 4th, uh, Zero One held uh, the uh, the Fire Festival. What was the inv- or I'm sorry, what was the involvement of the FMW talent there? Yeah, because of uh, WEW working with Zero One, uh, WEW uh, or sorry, Zero One agreed to let Kuroda and Kentaro Kanemura uh, participate in uh, the Fire Festival. And going back to just Kanemura, um, you know, with how much he got with uh, with FMW, and you know, he spent a lot of the money. Well, he want really wanted. You know, he he didn't have a lot of money as a result. He spent all his money that he was making, the hundred twenty, hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. You know, one hundred twenty of it's just gone. Well, you know, he has a home with uh, WEW, but that's not paying him that much. Uh, Big Japan's he's probably making thirty thousand a year off that. Well, Zero One's really the one that he really looks. He's really thankful for because he got a good payday working regularly with Zero One. They paid him well, and so uh, and so he always has positive words for this uh, side of, the, you know, this version of Zero One because it helped pay, um, kind of help get him financially to where he was with FMW. But, um, so they worked the Fire Festival tournament. There's uh, two different blocks, um, and Kuroda and Kanemura were in two different, the, in the two different blocks. Um, per, some main matches out of that was um, Kintaro Kanemura taking on Samoa Joe, uh, just a six-minute match, but it's, um, you know, Kanemura gets busted open. He does a table dive uh, on Samoa Joe, but before Samoa Joe would end up making him tap out to an STF. Um, K- uh, Kanemura would also have a match with uh, Masato Tanaka where it's a, a really good bloody match. Um, both of them are just punishing each other um, before they would end up uh, elbowing each other in the face and both being knocked out, um, and it, it ended up being a draw as a result. Um and then uh, Kanemura would actually have a really embarrassing loss in this on this uh, tournament against Otani. He would attack Otani uh, before the match. Well, Otani would fight back and then hit a, a spiral bomb on Kanemura, and the bell would ring. And right, and right away, Otani is pinning Kanemura, and so the referee counts three, and so Otani beats Kanemura in just three seconds. Uh, so Kanemura um, is a, pretty much eliminated after that. I mean, he has another match with Takamichinoku, but um, Kuroda actually does really well in this tournament. Um, he ends up defeating uh, Steve Carino. Uh, he ends up defeating um, Koei uh, Sato on the last night. Um he ends up defeating Yuki Ishikawa. And so he actually makes it to the finals of the tournament on August 4th and takes on Shinjiro Otani in the finals. Um, and it's a good, I mean, he has a good match. Um, you know, this is, again, zero to one is, is thought of as a really legitimate promotion. And so for Kuroda to make it this far in their big tournament of the year is, is a good look for WEW. And so um, Otani would end up getting the win though over Kuroda after about a, a good, really good 18 minute match uh, with a dragon suplex. So Otani would end up getting his second fire festival tournament win um, over Kuroda. So, uh, you know, Kenemer had some notable matches, and uh, Kuroda made it pretty far. So it was an overall good showing, and they would end up making uh, coming back the next year as well. All right, so that's going to take us to um, an Onita show on August 11th, if you want to go over that for us. Um, yeah, so pretty much um, this, this version of Onita FNW, this is the show that kind of shows, like, all right, this was a nostalgia act, and this is not – going to make it long term you know you can only go so far with nostalgia um there's i mean a lot of the guys aren't even uh, uh, the fnw guys that were on the show originally back in may at corrigan hall when they sold the building out are not even on this show i mean there's you know tetsuhiro kuroda takes on taka michinoku in a good eight minute match um but i mean in this building you know it it just looks like a hot gym that's kind of empty and so 
you know, it's not, there's nothing really notable about this show, and it just kind of has killed the Onita FNW nostalgia thing. It's kind of ended. Um, Onita's kind of lost interest in this project. Um, the main event's just a death match with Shoji Nakamaki, Hito, uh, Masaru Toy, who is an old wing guy. Uh, they defeat Asushi Onita, Mitsuhiro Matsunaga, and Ichiro Yaguchi when Toy pinned Yaguchi. And that's, I mean, like I said, it's just a, it's a nine minute match. It's just brawling, death match, but nothing good, nothing notable. But afterwards, Onita announces this is the end of Onita FMW. He's going to end the project here. At this point, Onita is kind of focusing on politics and just like Onita is somebody that just I when I'm into something I'm really into it and I'm only going to be into one thing at a time and right now it's politics and so wrestling is just kind of on the set is his politics are his main focus right now and wrestling has taken a backside to it and shows like this where it's just a, a typical house show looking show uh is pretty much um you know, it's it's like I said, it's it's taking the back burn. It's not anything that's a priority to him anymore. And so as a result, he ends Onita FMW after this show. Um, we'd mentioned before that, you know, Onita's got a little office. It's like Sambo, Asako, and a few others. Um, if he's not gonna be running a wrestling company, what are these guys gonna be doing for him? Um, pretty much just small indies, I'm guessing. Um you know, or sorry, well, they're going to wrestle in small things, but he still has his own office as far as um, handling politics, handling how uh, meetings, handling, um, you know, having conferences and, and, and everything like that. So, um, I mean, they're still working for him as far as working in his office, but I don't necessarily know, you know, the exact details of what he's doing other than right now he's doing politics and that's his main focus. So, I mean, I don't know if they're doing secretary work or if they're, you know, just pretty much being paid to be his friends or, but, you know, they are still currently employed by him. Um, just right now it's, you know, I mean, they work in wrestling shows, but they're not getting employed by him to work wrestling shows. Yeah, I, I'm just kind of thinking, like, if Onita wants to open up a shoe store, are they going to now become shoe salesmen or something? Um, okay. So, um, okay. So, uh, before WMF's big debut on the 28th, they ran a, a kind of uh, a trial show of sorts on um, August 18th in Sa Saitama. Um, are there any notes from that show? Yeah, um, so this was kind of like a practice show just to kind of, I mean, Mr. Ganosuke hadn't wrestled in, in seven months at this point, and so to kind of get him where, uh, uh, you know, work on the ring rust uh, for the big show in 10 days, but the main thing here is, so Pre, uh, prior to this show, they had originally announced uh, the semi-main event as Mr. Ganosuke and Shinzei, uh, Jinsei Shinzaki teaming up to take on Hizugatsu Oya and Mitsuhiro, Mitsuhiro Matsunaga. Well, then Ganosuke said, at a press conference announced, well, we're not doing death matches, so I don't want Matsunaga on the show. So Matsunaga's out, and like I said, Kuroda... Due to loyalty to Hayabusa, he had agreed to work the show, uh, to begin working with WMF, and Hayabusa and Kuroda met uh, prior to the show, and um, like I said, Kuroda is announcing he's going to work WMF, so Ganosuke makes the match Kuroda and Oya versus Ganosuke and Shinzaki. Well, at a press conference, Matsunaga is really upset, and he, and he comes up to Ganosuke, and he starts yelling at Ganosuke, going, I want, you know, this is WMF, this is supposed to be the new FMW, the, um, you know, the, the second version of FMW. You have, you know, WMF, obviously, backwards for FMW, you know, and FMW was brought up in death matches. We need to have death matches. I want to have a death match, and you're kicking me off the show because I want to have a death match. And so Mats Matsunaga gets really upset over this at the press conference, and Ganosuke and him start yelling at each other. Well, Matsunaga now shows up at the beginning of this show and gets on the mic and starts calling out Ganosuke for being a, a wimp, for not wanting death matches, and kicking him off the next show. And so Ganosuke comes to the ring and they start brawling. Um, so Matsunaga and Ganosuke now here kind of have a few going uh, into the, uh, the first show. So Matsunaga is going to be kind of the top heel right now leading into the show that he's not even on for August 28th. All right. So that's going to take us to an, a WEW show on August 23rd. Yeah. So, um, so at this point, um, WEW with the with the um, how not the Corrigan Hall shows were not doing well, so they kind of just moved to a smaller building for a little while. Differ Rocky, um, 
you know, we've talked about that in the past where it's a smaller 1,800-seat uh, building um, in South Tokyo. Um, they announced 1,100 fans out of a 1,800-seat building. So, you know, again, WW is struggling, but they're trying to realize, okay, we're, we can't run Corrigan Hall shows right now. Let's run a smaller show. Um, you know, again, and these mid-card matches are just filled with Fuki's guys or Kai and Tai Dojo. Um, you know, um, they've brought back uh, Kaori Nakayama, who um, she had been she had left FMW. Um, she is now teaming up with Shark Tashia, her old rival in FMW. Um, Nakayama, who was dating Masato Tanaka when she left FMW, well, they've broken up. Um, she's not going to work for Zero One, where Tanaka is, so she needs she needs bookings. So she starts working for Fuyuki, um, and so Nakayama and Tashia team up to take on Biomonster DNA. Um, this is just a nothing match, but eventually Nakayama would get the roll up over Biomonster DNA. They are no longer going to push Biomonster DNA. After FNW ended, they stopped pushing DNA as a big monster, and they're about to try and uh, end the gimmick here in, a, in pretty soon anyway. Uh, they have a really awesome match, actually, um, for the WEW Tag Team titles. Uh, Takashi Sasaki and Jintaro, um, like I said, they were DDT guys that are pretty much now going to become WEW full-time guys. They take on Taka Michinoku in High 69, um, who was, at the time, one of Taka's students for the Kaintai Dojo. This is an awesome match, 15-minute uh, match. Um, it's probably it might have been my favorite match in 2002, um, and it's like I said, it's just an awesome high flying match. Uh, Jintaro would end up hit, getting a shooting star press uh, for the win over a uh, high 69 to uh, win the WEW tag team titles. Uh, the main event is uh, Kentaro Kanemura and Tetsuhiro Kuroda challenging for the WEW World Title again. Fuyuki was the champion when FNW ended. Obviously, his career's over now, so they vacated the title and starting it up new with the WEW promotion, and so. This is a match um, that is a uh, they you know I mean it's a Kanemura brawl uh, table you know go through the table type match, uh, but eventually uh, Fuyuki is in storyline is really upset over Kuroda joining WMF. So he has proclaimed that Kuroda is public enemy number one to WEW because he's a traitor. He's wrestling for WMF, the rival promotion, and so. After um, they uh, um, they all attack uh, Shinjuku Shark, uh, Chakoba Mukai, they attack Kuroda, and Kanemura would end up getting the win over Kuroda uh, for the WEW title. And um, afterwards, uh, Fuyuki would take Kuroda to the back with Mukai and Shinjuku Shark, and they would chain Kuroda up and uh, pretty much tie firecrackers to him. And the firecrackers would go off while uh, Kuroda is uh, pretty much chained up to, uh, like, hanging from the wall. And so, like I said, the firecrackers go off. And um, so this sets up Kuroda as the top baby face against Fuyuki, Kanemura, all his WEW guys. Um, eventually, Takashi Sasaki, Taka Michinoku, they would all make the save for Kuroda. So, um, you know, it's it's the baby faces versus the, uh, you know, Kuroda face uh, and the face guys against Fuyuki and his heel side going forward in WEW. So um, one thing I'm curious about when 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 they're doing angles involving the you know involving guys who are working for both companies, do both companies have any say in what the other guys do with their guys? Well, just right now, Kuroda is the only one going to be working uh, WMF, and so Fuyuki's thing is okay. Kuroda, you can you know work WMF shows, but you cannot job. You will not job to a WMF guy. So Kuroda will not job to anyone. And that, I mean that's just part of the agreement. If you want Kuroda there, he's not going to lose to any WMF guys. I'm not gonna, you know, my company's not gonna look bad as a result losing to your guys. And so that's the only um, drawback to bringing in Kuroda is he cannot job. All right, so that's gonna take us to the WMF debut show on August 28th. Yeah, so they announced 1,500 fans um, at the Dipper Rocky. Um, that is not sellout. Usually now they announce the sellout, but I mean a lot of promotions announce sellouts and they're not really. But anyway, I mean it's a good sh it's a good number, but it's not necessarily a sellout. But I would if, it, if 1,500 at an 1,800 seat building, I would consider a disappointment considering this is promoted as this is the brand new start of a fresh new FMW even and we got all the FMW guys and we got Tori Yuman and Michinoku guys and we have Hayabusa's first appearance and so anyway so 
Well, they announced 1500. Um, all the WMF guys come out. There's brand new theme music for the promotion. Um, everyone, you know, like I said, they've come up with new gimmicks for a couple of the younger uh, card guys. Um, and, um, you know, Mama Sasaki and then uh, Mr. Ganeski is the last one to come out before Hayabusa's music uh, plays. And they're all on the stage just standing there when Hayabusa music's, Hayabusa's music plays. And Hayabusa is wheeled out by uh, Tetsuya Yamada. And um, they give Hayabusa the microphone, and he cuts this passionate promo. Um, I mean, he's crying during this promo of just – Everything. This is his first appearance in front of the crowd since October 22nd after his injury. You know, it's been 10 months and, you know, he's just telling the fans how much he missed them and how hard he's worked and what he, you know, just some of the trials and tribulations he's gone through and everything's done and how hard he's worked to try and relearn how to walk. And he shows, you know, I've been working very hard to stand up. And so he stands up for the first time, show the crowd. Um, so, you know, that's his first time standing up publicly um you know and fans are chanting or cheering for him and um eventually he ends up uh talking about shoshi arai and just you know how close they were and you know how he took his own life and you know again he gets really emotional talking about this and just um they end up doing a tin bell uh salute for shoshi arai afterwards so it's a really emotional beginning of the promotion and just you know a lot of the sadness that came with fmw um you know to start off with wmf but um some of the main matches on this show, um, they like I said, Satoru uh, Makata has a new gimmick. He's sold, his name is Soldier now. Uh, he takes on Flying Kid Ichihara and ends up defeating him um, after the referee stops him. So they're going to kind of push uh, Soldier as a top heel uh, or one of the top heels. Um, there's a, a pretty good match. Uh, Great Sasuke, uh, Tiger Mask, and Dragon Kid take on Goemon, Onryo, and Darkness Dragon. Around this time, um, Dragon Kid and Darkness Dragon for the Toriyumon promotion, they were feuding. They were going to have a big um, main event show um, and September 8th at a big building. I think Iraqi Coliseum, you know, big, uh, you know, 10,000 plus seat building. Um, so their feud is really hot at this time. You know, on top of the Michinoku guys, um, Dragon Kid, uh, um, some people might know this, he actually was an old FMW referee um, in 94 for Onita's FMW, and um, he wanted to be a wrestler, but Onita was like, you're too small. You can't, you, you, you're too small to be a wrestler. You got to be a referee. And so he actually was a referee. Um, he actually ended up uh, coming into the cage match during Hayabusa Onita for the exploding cage after Goido got injured. He actually would be the one to make the pinfall. Um, so him and Hayabusa actually have a, a longstanding relationship. They were really good friends, but... Um, Anyway, Great Sasuke, Tiger Mask, Dragon Kid end up defeating Goemon, Onryo, and Darkness Dragon. Uh, Tiger uh, Tiger Mask would end up getting a Tiger Suplex on Onryo, who's completely has a makeover here. He's dressed up like he's coming out of Hot Topic, or he's he's uh, got all these chains and just his gear, like a BDSM kind of look going for him. So he's completely changed from just his white little shirt and pants. Uh, he's got a completely new makeover here. Um, Tetsuhiro Kuroda and Hitsugatsu Oya take on Mr. Ganesuke and Shinzei Shinzaki. Um, they, this is, you know, a noble match. Ganesuke and Shinzaki, who have feuded for years and years, now are teaming up out of the respect of Hayabusa. Um, this is an okay match. Um, eventually, um, during this match, and, you know, they do some signature spots like Mr. Ganesuke, um, and Shinzaki doing a praying power bomb. Ganesuke had always done a mocking praying power bomb. Well, now they're doing a praying power bomb together as a team. But um, they end up uh, Matsunaga would end up running into the ring or attacking Ganesuke during the match with a barbed wire bat, attacking him, um, laying Ganesuke out with a uh, like busting him open. So Ganesuke is cut open during this match. Um, Eventually, uh, Ganesuke would get back in the ring. And, and like I said, Matsunaga attacks him a couple times even. Uh, but eventually, Ganesuke would get back in the ring, and Kuroda would come at him with a lariat. Ganesuke would um, eventually turn it into a Ganesuke clutch. And it looks like Ganesuke is going to get the win over Kuroda while Kuroda kicks out at the last little moment. And then Kuroda would come back with a lariat and pin Ganesuke. So Kuroda and uh Oya get the win, and afterwards, Matsunaga's, um, you know, on the stage, you know, this is, you know, having declared war on Mr. Ganesuke, and he's looking at Hayabusa even, 
you know, Hayabusa has the decision. He's the commissioner. He can make this a deathmatch promotion if he wants. He has that power. And so he's kind of looking at Hayabusa. And when Goemon comes to the ring and high fives Matsunaga, gets on the mic and is, you know, proclaimed that this is, you know, he's Matsunaga is now one of them. And so Goemon announces the new heel stable consisting of Matsunaga, Tetsuhiro Kuroda, Hisagatsu Oya, and Soldier. They're going to be called Brand Double Cross. Um, Mr. Go- uh, sorry, uh, Koji Nakagawa Goemon. That was his nickname, Mr. Double Cross in FNW. So now this is the new heel group. Um, and uh, Goemon ends up grabbing a water bottle from Hayabusa, goes over to Hayabusa, grabs one of his water bottles um, and takes it and uh, begins pouring it on Hayabusa's head and then takes a sip of it and spits the water in Hayabusa's face to really get over this group as a new heel. Uh, Ganasuke gets up and starts chasing after them and bar- they barely escape and Ganesuke goes over to Hayabusa and, and hugs them and is apologizing for letting that happen. And so this is the new heel group. They're upset over Ganesuke and Hayabusa not letting this be a deathmatch promotion. Um, Matsunaga wants a match. And so uh, a, this to be a deathmatch promotion, this to be FNW, the deathmatch promotion. Um, so going forward, they're the new heel group. And then the main event is uh, Mama Sasaki and Garuda taking on, or sorry, Mama Sasaki taking on Garuda. Again, this is the the focus. They're, this is the young promotion. This is the young guys. Mama Sasaki's 28 at the time. Uh, Garuda is probably 24. So this is going to be the new focus. And uh, Mama Sasaki's music plays, and it ends up cutting out. And it's um, his uh, his old FNW music starts playing, but then eventually a new theme music begins playing and it's an F and the old FNW theme music uh remixed and so it's just a new beat to the FNW theme song. Mama Sasaki comes out with an FNW shirt and pulls it off and reveals a new WMF shirt. And um so like I said, Mama Sasaki is gonna be the real focus here. This is a good match. Mem Sasaki really is probably at his prime as far as work rate goes. He, um, you know, he had this is a really good stretch for him. Um, Garuda is still, I mean, he's still just inexperienced. He's only a two-year pro, um, and it shows here. But he's still got some talent. He still has potential. Um, he's still pretty good with the high flying moves. You know, he hits a 450 firebird splash, and he can dive out of the ring. And I mean, like I said, it's a good match. Um, eventually, Mammoth would end up getting the Mammoth Buster on Garuda to get the win to really solid, um, you know, show that Mammoth. Sasaki is now going to be the ace of this promotion. He's going to be the focus. Um, you know, so overall it was a good show, um, but I would say just a little bit disappointing in the sense of it didn't sell out and um, you know, there weren't, a, it wasn't a great match or anything like that. On uh, And it just for it being a debut show, it probably needed a great match because there were a potential of some great matches and they were just kind of good. Now, um, we've talked a lot in the past about how the uh you know, the, um, the Japanese magazine system really helped FMW. Uh, what is the press's reaction to the WMF show? It's uh, the first show. I mean, it's, it's kind of like what FNW was right before the end where it's a middle of the book. I mean, it's not front cover. And I mean, and also on this day, it didn't help out the fact that like the biggest MMA show ever happened with like 80,000 people at the Jingu stadium on, um, for uh, pride, like a pride show took place. And it was the biggest show ever pretty much in Japan. Cause right now pride is like the hottest it's ever been. And it was the same day. So pride got all the, the big mainstream, attention but i mean it was it was it got middle of the road magazine attention you know i mean it it um it got like i said you know page 20 and uh, it got two two or three pages of colored pictures and everything so i mean it was it was noted but it wasn't like top front front cover or anything like that but again the biggest show ever also took place on this day so um you know, but I mean, in, in for this show, it's thought of okay, this can be the new F and W, if they can, you know, run a big show every month. But um, I mean, we'll go down here in a second. You know, it it can't. It ends up not being what F and W was even at the end. One question uh, that I've always kind of had: when you have these uh, companies that are kind of smaller and they're they're only running, uh, say, you know, five, six, seven times per month. Um, what does it mean to have a wrestler contracted to them? Like what benefits are they giving them and what are the company getting back by having a contract with them? Yeah, right now, I mean, it's just you're not you're getting paid a regular sum fee and you're going to work every show if you're a contracted wrestler. Um, 
you know, right now the WMF guys, you know, they have permission if they want to work somewhere else. But at this point, none of them are really working anywhere else. So, I mean, they're just getting a, some pay. Again, I don't know how much they're making. It's obviously going to be less than what they were making with FMW. Um, but they're going to make a some fee for working this amount of shows. And I mean, as as we go down, you know, because the shows aren't don't end up doing that great, they end up cutting the shows. And as a result, um, you know, it ends up being a fi- you know a financial loser because yeah, you're paying all these wrestlers a some fee to work seven shows. Well, those seven shows aren't financial successful, so you're going to cut it down to three shows in small buildings. And as a result, you have a financially um, hurting promotion. All right. So okay, going on um, now. Sometime in August, WEW announces that, that they've um, they've got a full time broadcast deal with Samurai TV. Um, I'm just curious, are these like money exchange deals or is it just exposure for content? Um, I'm sure they're getting paid somewhat, um, you know, but it's nothing to like live off of. But I mean, a lot of it is just exposure to get on TV. Uh, But I never I've never really known. I knew Gaura would just literally run. You you could be on our network for exposure and that's it. We're not paying you. Um, Samurai TV, I believe, does pay you. Um, But again, it's really it's there for the exposure. Exposure, but actually, WEW would actually lose um, uh, Samurai TV after November because I mean, Samurai TV wants big, successful shows, and if you're running, you know. Uh, unsuccessful Corrigan Hall shows, if there's not, not that much attention, if you can't run a successful Corrigan Hall show, or if you can't you know, even run Corrigan Hall, Samurai TV is going to drop you eventually, and that's what Samurai TV would actually end up doing eventually for both WMF and uh, WEW um, in different cases. So um, on September 14th, WEW ran a show, if you want to go over that. So, uh, Fuki, again, this is, I mean, we're getting into just Fuki, uh, really going all out on his storyline. So his new, his thing is, you know, I hate Tetsuhiro Kuroda. I'm going to get Tetsuhiro Kuroda back. Um, so they show him backstage and they're, uh, with Simu Yoshida, the old FMW vice president. He's working for WW. Um, a bunch of the old w, uh, FMW guys are also working for this promotion. A bunch of the announcers, um, uh, Nakamura, his his uh, Fuki's assist, assistant, the ring announcer for FNW is the ring assist, uh, ring announcer here. Uh, but anyway, backstage they see Fuki and and uh, Yoshida, and they're stirring this pot of beans, and they're pouring some type of liquid uh, in it to make it smell disgusting. Um, but they're gonna what they're gonna do is they're gonna dump it on Kuroda. They're gonna really you know they're gonna get back at Kuroda every single time, um, and then. Um, the main matches on this show, um, actually, so Bio Monster DNA and Shinjuku Shark team up with, uh, team up to take on Kaori Nakayama and uh, Yuki Miyazaki. Um, afterwards, DNA got the win over Miyazaki. Afterwards, uh, a, a letter to, is given to Bio Monster DNA. He starts reading the letter, and you actually have hear the woman's voice playing over the the like the speaker, so the whole crowd can hear it. And it's supposed to be uh, Gasako Gashigawara, Biomonster DNA's mother, stating, I didn't raise a monster. I raised a little boy. I miss my boy. I don't want him to be a monster. Please come back to me. And, you know, I, I want an end to Biomonster DNA. Please come back to me, Gasako. And you see, you know, Biomonster DNA reading this and ends up, he ends up going crazy and pulling the mask off. And you see Gosako. And so, uh, Yosako runs back to the to the back all upset and over the emotions of you know his mother wants him back as a human and he doesn't want she doesn't want a monster as a child so uh Gosako has gotten has is um no longer bio monster DNA but we'll go over here in a little while that the bio monster DNA gimmick uh remains um Chakoba Mukai, uh, he takes on uh, Macho Pump, who is a Michinoku pro wrestler. Uh, pretty much one of those, uh, he's a very fi- financially wealthy guy who wanted to be a wrestler, and so he uh, paid enough money to get trained to become a wrestler. And his thing is he's, you know, sexy gimmick and has all the girls, and Chakoba Mukai has all the girls too because he's a porn star. And so it's just a comedy uh, match. And also around this time period, they've made Nakamura the, FN- or the old FNW ring announcer, Fuki's assistant. He 
he's a big perv backstage. He's like harassing all the girls. Um, and like you see him without uh, his like fly uh, open, just all these um, sexual little um, remarks kind of to just get over the heat. He's a perv. I think just Fuki just messing with them. Give them that gimmick. Um, Sakashi Sasaki and Jintaro, they defend the WWE tag titles against uh, Kudo Hadaka and uh, Tomohiro Ishii. Um, uh, after Ishii would end up getting uh, disqualified. Um, so, you know, they're working, Ishii and uh, Hadaka, they're working uh, Michinoku Pro at this time period. And so, um, Sasaki and Jitaro defend the title successfully after Ishii got DQ'd. And then the main event is a Apex of Triangle Championship match. Uh, Kanemura, Orohara, and Dick Togo take on Tetsuhiro Kuroda, uh, Taka Michinoku, and Hido. Uh, the Apex of Triangle tag, t- that's the six man titles from uh, Orohara's six man, uh, sorry, Orohara's Mobius promotion. Um, pretty much what happens in, in, ends up happening here is Hito, who had been feuding for the last couple months ever since he joined back with or joined up with WEW, he ends up, um, you know, again, he you think he's hates Fuki and so he's with the, the baby faces. Well, he ends up turning on Kuroda during this match, attacking Kuroda, laying him out. And so eventually Orohara would end up getting the win on Kuroda. So Hito has now joined the heel side. Um, so Orohara, Tako, and Kanemura, the Apex six-man tag title champions. Um, afterwards, Fuki comes out with his pot of beans that smell horribly, and he, you know, they have um, Orohara and, and, and um, you know, Hito, all that, holding on to Kuroda, so Fuki can pour the beans on uh, Kuroda. Well, Kuroda escapes, kicks Fuki, grabs the pot of beans, and then drops the beans on Fuyuki, and so Fuyuki is just covered with all these soiled beans, and all, and it's a big comedy thing. But all the wrestlers, all Kanemura, like, oh, you, it's, the smell is horrible. All holding their nose and covering their nose with the belts, and and so, you know, it's pretty much just this back and forth with Fuyuki and Kuroda here uh, as they feud because of the. Um, uh, Kuroda work in WMF, but so I mean, Fuki was willing to take some, you know, give some and take some as Fuki's kind of thing. He was able to, you know, he was willing to make himself look like an idiot. And this is a big comedy spot here. And just all the wrestlers are just disgusted with how bad Fuki uh, smells to end the show. Um, <laughs> just the same old Fuki. Um, so okay, so um, then uh, WMF they ran a kind of a kind of smaller show at uh, the Shinjuku Island Hall. Um, if you want to go over that one for us, yeah. So this was kind of pretty much a house show. Like I said, WMF, um, you know, they ran some smaller buildings. They announced a thousand. I don't know what they really it was it really a thousand, but it was uh, it was a small building. But that is the thing. WMF really wasn't able to tour, and so there really wasn't a big you you know the big thing with WMF is. They they got a lot of the FMW fans that stayed that were sided with the Hayabusa side, you know, the Hayabusa fans. Well, you know, or some of the split up some of the Fuki fans. It's just the problem with WMF was there wasn't enough new fans that were willing to come into this small independent promotion. You know, you're just bringing in the old FMW fans, and now you split them apart. And you know, it wasn't enough fans really to you know keep fmw going well now you split it apart and yeah it's a smaller promotion but it's still just you know you're not if you're not bringing in new fans you're not holding a successful promotion and as a result you know shows like this didn't do very well and they found out fast we're gonna have to run even smaller buildings um but the main thing here is hisagatsu oya took on mama sasaki um the main uh pretty much is Mitsuhiro Matsunaga attacking Ma- uh, Mama Sasaki. He's really upset over Ganosuke, uh, you know, not letting the death matches. So he's going to declare war on all the WMF guys. That includes Mama Sasaki. And so he comes into the ring um, and attacks Mama Sasaki several times with that barbed wire bat um, and lays Mammoth out. And eventually, you know, setting up Oya to hit a backdrop suplex. Well, Mammoth would be able to kick out, but eventually... Um, uh, Oya would get him in like a Fujiwara arm lock and Mammoth would end up having to tap out and so it pretty much gets over um, you know m- again Matsunaga just causing all this chaos well they end up uh, you know uh, Ganosuke and Hayabusa agree you know they, uh, due to Mammoth Sasaki's request alright I want a match of Matsunaga and Ganosuke and Hayabusa agree okay 
what we'll do is it's going to be Mama Sasaki versus uh, Matsunaga at the next show. Um, if Matsunaga wins, he can stay in WMF and it can be a, we can run death matches. If he loses, he's out of the promotion. And so that's the big match set up for later in the month. Um, the other, uh, and actually I take it, well, kind of, I went kind of forward there, but Tetsuhiro Kuroda and Soldier, um, they defeated Mr. Ganasuke and Garuda after Matsunaga had, had attacked Ganasuke and Garuda. So he had attacked Mammoth, and then he attacked Ganasuke, and because of just the constant attacks, that's what led to Ganasuke and Hayabusa agreeing, okay, we'll have this match from Mammoth and uh, Matsunaga later in the month. So um, when when it started, they announced that they weren't going to be doing the violent stuff, and now they're kind of you know they're they're doing this kind of death match. Are they trying to test the waters with this and see what the fans think? No, it's to get over Mama Sasaki, and this is just literally because um, they don't even end up doing a death match, and we'll go over here in a sec. But this is literally just we're going to get Mama Sasaki over. All right, so that's going to take us to the WMF show on September 29th. Yeah, so again, um, you know, and they add, they have some, um, and this is at the Saitama uh, Koshigawa Studio, Big Japan, ran here a couple times. It's it's a, it's a it's kind of like a, look. it looks like a big warehouse in Saitama, um, but they announced a thousand fans. There's some Tori Yuman guys uh, on the show. But anyway, uh, Mama Sasaki took on uh, Mitsuhiro Matsunaga. Um, it would only go five minutes. Uh, Matsunaga would attack him right away and um, control a little, you know, start of the match. And um, but eventually, uh, you know, and it's not a, it's not a death match. There's, there's some chairs involved. Matsunaga's using chairs, hitting, uh, you know, I believe he Matsunaga power bombs Mama through like um, a chair, like he stacked two chairs, uh, a chair on top of two chairs, and power bomb Mama Sasaki. That's the big spot, really, um, before Matsunaga is about to hit Mama Sasaki with the chair, and Mama Sasaki punches it punches the chair, and it's supposed to connect through and hit Ma uh, Matsunaga. Doesn't really work, but um, you know the announcers really sell it. It's like, oh my God, look at this guy! Look how powerful he is! He just punched his, you know, punched the chair, and um, eventually Mama Sasaki would put away Matsunaga. At, uh, you know, like I said, after about five minutes with the Mammoth Buster. And um, so afterwards, Matsunaga and Mama Sasaki shake hands. Mas Matsunaga agrees to leave. And like I said, it's really just to put Mama Sasaki over as this killer. He's the new face. He just defeated a legend. Matsunaga will now leave WMF, and he would end up leaving WMF as a result. Uh, Goy Mom would come out afterward or come, would be really upset over lose the loss of Matsunaga. Um you know, Goemon, like I said, they're really kind of focusing Goemon here as this top heel. He's got, he's on the mic. He's the representative for the group, the lead heel. Um, but anyway, uh, the main event is uh, Mr. Ganesuke, Jinzei Shinzaki, and Garuda against Tetsuhiro Kuroda, uh, Hizagatsu Oya, and Soldier. And uh, Ganesuke would end up getting the win over Oya. It's an okay match. Again, it's just kind of, it's just... There's not much heat. It's just I don't know. It just this promotion just never really clicked, especially outside of Tokyo. And as a result, you know, it's just kind of every show just kind of seemed a little disappointing as a result with with how much potential it had. Um, and like I said, uh, Samurai TV after this show would actually uh, drop them unless it was a Corrigan Hall show. Only Corrigan Hall shows now. This was the this was the first and last time they would agree to run uh, have a show. Um, you know, outside Tokyo. Okay, Matsunaga Mammoth will broadcast cast this okay this this show isn't up to our standards um we're only gonna let we're only gonna air corrigan hall shows now going forward for you so um one thing i'm curious about so what arrangement did they have with matsu naga uh to have him come in and lose so quickly yeah like i said i'm sure it was just pay i'm sure it was we're gonna pay you and you know the whole thing about you is you're gonna put over our star you're gonna put over mama sasaki because the thing is is who are you going to put over uh, – who's who's going to put Mama Sasaki over to really make him look like this world beater? Well, okay, you could put over – you could have him beat Ganesuke, but they're, they're both faces right now, That and that could be saved. There's no real reason that – you can't put over Kuroda, and we'll go over that here in a second. Who are you – who can you have him beat – to, you know, on the roster because everyone else is younger. So you're going to have to look outside. Well, you know, who can we bring in from the outside that has a name value? And, I mean, that can, 
put him that's willing to put him over and will be able to you know establish Mama Sasaki as the top guy and that is Matsunaga and you know I mean let's only have a five minute match because Matsunaga at this point is not a very good worker especially in you know when you take away all the death match aspect and you're only adding chairs into a match it doesn't need to be that long and especially with Mama Sasaki you just you know pretty much just let's let's just get it over with let's have it have the match Mama Sasaki went clean fast and that really put him over as a top guy Matsunaga's willing to do it for the right pay and that's what ended up happening so um around this time uh Fuki and several wew guys they went to arise grave uh why did they do this yeah so um around this time period uh shoshi arise grave i made mention last episode i went there i went to the um the grave site uh in saitama and you know it, it there's an fmw logo for shoshi arai's uh grave and so probably around this time period the grave had probably been put in place and um so fuyuki kuroda chakobo mukai kaori nakayama hito um azuza kudo they all went out there to pay respect to arai um you know they're all praying to him um fuyuki would would announce to the cameraman that was taking the picture you know he hopes that um a rise spirit will help the october 23rd uh show at corrigan hall and the november 4th show at the Yokohama bunk gym show those are two, again those are two big shows and this promotion's not doing that great and so it's just a way of just you know fuyuki going there to honor but also to try and do some publicity also one thing that we talked about before was that after FMW folded, uh, you know, Sasaki, he he was kind of he was kind of getting out of uh, uh, you know the business, and um, now he's one of w WMF's main guys. How is his enthusiasm for uh, for the company at this point? Well, he wasn't unnecessarily looking to get out of the business. He just saw an opportunity uh, to work because he was a sumo a fighter before. He was a sumo wrestler. So he had a legitimate, you know, he thought of himself as a legitimate badass and I can fight in real matches. I was a sumo fighter. And he got an opening to work a pride show, um, a trial run to see if he could get into pride. Again, pride is at, the, at, at its peak right now as far as popularity. If I could get in that, I could make big time money. And I mean, I you know, I could still always come back to wrestling or still work, you know, at this time he's thinking, at the very beginning he's thinking FMW, um, you know, but then right afterwards FMW closed and he had the match and he got his ass kicked by this old veteran and he saw the writing on the wall, okay, this isn't for me, I am i can't make it here. And so, I mean, it really was just to see what else was out there. So, you know, um, again, you know, there was two choices to make from. There was the Fuki side and the Ganaske side. And the Ganaske side is seeing, hey, you come with me, I'll make you the top face of the promotion. Fuyuki's not going to do that. He's not going to push you over Kanemura. He's not going to push you over Kuroda. Those are his guys. He'll make you like a second level guy. I'll make you the top guy. And all the other younger guys are going to be there to help you. And, you know, Mammoth had been living in the dojo, you know, working with the dojo boys. And and that was another aspect was WMF uh, cre was able to create a dojo afterwards. Um, WEW didn't have a dojo. So the younger guys could still train and work, um, you know, and live there, like what their lifestyle was while in FMW. WEW didn't have that. They weren't bringing, you know, they weren't developing new wrestlers. And so Mama Sasaki, you know, just saw, wait, I can be that now. I can now be the top face. And this promotion is kind of like the new FMW. And so it was just, you know, one of his ways of showing that he can, uh, you know, really go out and have these great, awesome matches in single main events at a Corrigan Hall. All right. That he cool. could, sorry. That he, sorry that he couldn't have with, uh, with WWW because Fuki was never going to give him that type of push. All right. So, okay, so uh, the only show in October uh, that we're going to go over is going to be the October 23rd WEW show. So if you want to go over that for us. Yeah, there's some more uh, Fuki storylines here. Um, Rika Fujisaki, who um, had been dating uh, Shinjuku Shark around this time period, or sorry, back in FMW, they'd gotten together. Well, she reappears and has announced, you know, originally she was kidnapped um, by the by the Yakuza, and, um, you know, Shinjuku Shark had to win her back, defeating all these um, pretty much mobsters. And um, eventually, you know, she disappeared after that. Well, she's back now. And now she, she says, the reason I've been gone was because I was pregnant with your baby. 
And Shinjuku Shark is just now finding this out. So she reveals the new baby. And Shinjuku Shark, anyone who's ever seen him, has this weird, like, curly Afro type hair. Well, she reveals the baby, and it's a baby with an Afro wig. And so this is your baby. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, I, I'm. I don't necessarily know as far as they're, if they're supposed to still be dating in the storyline, but anyway, Shinjuku Shark now has a baby. Um, the other aspect is uh, Kota Fuyuki comes out with his entourage, Shinmu Yoshida, um, some other, you know, uh, Nakamura, some of the other new WEW uh, personnel, and they announce that Biomonster DNA, uh, you know, Gosaku is no longer Biomonster DNA. Well, they, they have created a new Biomonster DNA. That old one was soft. Gosaku had been becoming pretty much a human being, losing the girls. Well, we've created a new one to be a new monster, and it's going to be, you know, even more, uh, you know, show even more rampage. And then all of a sudden the lights turn off and you see Biomonster DNA show up and going through the crowd, just go, you know, being a monster and then walks away, you know, just ends up leaving and that's it. And then um, Kanamura gets on the microphone, and he kind of has a little issue with Fuki. I, I kind of missed on what his issue was. But Kanamura and Fuki kind of are at a little bit of odds here. Um, nothing too serious, but Kanamura is cutting on the mic, or cutting a promo on the mic, and Fuki just, gra- just ends up going on with the show and just leaves. It just walks out, and Kanamura just has, like, his mouth open like, what the hell just happened? And so... That ends up uh, later. Um, so back on uh, October 2nd, um, Yuki had done a press conference with Kanemura and Tanaka setting up um, a ma- the main event for the Yokohama Bunka Gym show, uh, Tanaka versus Kanemura. Well, Fuyuki starts bad-mouthing Tanaka at this press conference and ends up – Tanaka starts you know, yammering back, and Fuyuki ends up pouring water on Tanaka. Well, Tanaka gets up and elbows Fuyuki in the face, and so it hurts Tanaka – or sorry, hurts uh, Fuyuki's chin. And fast forward to October 23rd, backstage Tanaka, or sorry, uh, Kanemura and Fuyuki are backstage, and Fuyuki's still selling that elbow shot 20 days earlier. And now Fuyuki has found um, this uh, spear, this guy who cursed Tanaka. And he's like, he's all dressed up in all black, and he is doing a curse on uh, Tanaka. And, um, dur- you know, he has all these, like, these, um, these, these uh, branches, uh, uh, leaves, just um, and doing a chant pretty much to curse Tanaka. And um, he ends up giving Tanaka's picture to the and setting it on fire, to, you know, as a symbol of this picture is being cursed. Uh, you know, Tanaka is being cursed as a result. You know, I'm putting the curse on Tanaka. Well, Kanemura, to be a jerk because of what Fuyuki did earlier in the show, ends up taking a picture of Fuyuki and putting it in the fire, and so Fuyuki's picture ends up getting uh, caught on fire as well, until Fuyuki sees that, and what the hell, and starts trying to put the fire off of uh, of himself, the picture of himself, so that he's not cursed, and Kanemura runs off, and you don't even see him, and Fuyuki's like, you, you little bastard, so, I mean, that's all it really was, I mean, they didn't, like, feud or anything like that, but, um, Anyway, um, the main matches here are, are uh, Kaori Nakayama. I, told, I mentioned how she had um, began, began working for both WMF and WEW. Well, um, she at this point has just decided to just leave the wrestling business, um, you know, just work freelance for WMF and WEW is not going to make, you know, financially support her. She's not dating Tanaka anymore. She's just going to get out of the wrestling business altogether. And so she has a retirement match against uh, Shark Tashia, her old uh, rival in FMW. Um, she gets, you know, she gets some spots in, but Shark Tashia just ends up laying her out like usual. She never actually would end up getting a win over Shark Tashia in FMW or here. Um, Tashia would end up getting the win over Nakayama. Afterwards, they would hug um, and then Nakayama would have a retirement ceremony afterwards, and uh, Megumi Kudo would show up, present her flowers, and hug her. Um, and, to, and Nakayama would leave the wrestling business for good afterwards. Um, uh, Kentaro Kanemura, Masio Orohara, uh, they would team up and they would defeat Kamikaze and uh, Tomohiro uh, Ishii. Um, it's just a standard match. 
um, Orohara would end up getting the win over Ishii. Um, Ishii, obviously, not anywhere near the star that he would end up becoming in New Japan as he is right now in 2002. Um, and then the uh, main event is um, Fuki would bring back the old WEW six-man titles that had not been used in like a year or so ever since Hayabusa's injury. Uh, he brings back the WEW six-man titles in a, a WEW versus Zero One match. Uh, Shinjiro Otani, Masato Tanaka, and Kiro Goi, uh, Wakada uh, team up as a Zero One team against Tetsuhiro Kuroda, Taka Michinoku, and Gosako Gashigawara, like I may mention. Uh, Ga uh, Gosako had dropped the Biomonster DNA gimmick at this point, and it's going to be a real wrestler. And um, the, the big thing here is, um, you know, I mean, it's an okay good to good match. Nothing stands out really nothing really stood out with the wew matches really other than maybe the main event will go uh, at the oklahoma show but um um pretty much the big thing here is gosaka just getting destroyed the whole match and being outclassed and everything but eventually taka michinoku would end up getting the win over wakida and so taka kuroda and gosaka win the wew six-man titles it's a big thing for gosaka you know he's holding a title belt he's a champion now now he's a human um and so w, uh, the WW uh, side ends up getting the win over the zero one one side uh, leading up to the big Yokohama show in November. So um, speaking of which, uh, at the beginning of uh, the month, they announced uh, the uh, – wait, I did – man, I did it wrong again. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the two companies confused over and over and over. <laughs> Sorry because we're not talking about WW. We're talking about WMF. One. It's gonna get worse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know. All right, cool. Um, okay, sorry about that. Let me do that one more time. All right. So, okay. So, uh, in early November, WMF they announced the the card for they they they're okay. They're going to debut at Kuroken Hall on December twelfth, and they and they announced the card. Uh, what do they have for for the fans? Um, they announced that it's going to be um, the main matches are uh, Mama Sasaki, Tetsuhiro Kuroda, uh, kind of a, a big WMF versus WEW match. Um, they're going to have uh, Satoshi Kojima. Uh, he'll appear. Uh, you know, he's working for All Japan at this point. He's the big kind of outside draw. And there'll be a couple of uh, Tori Yuman guys and Michinoku guys on the show as well. Okay, so that's going to take us to a WEW, or I'm sorry, the, the WEW show on November 4th in Yokohama, uh, if you want to go over that. Yeah, so they announced 2,000 fans at this show. Um, again, I can only imagine how few that really was, but, I mean, they announced 2,000, which is a near 5,000-seat building. I mean, you've been to Yokohama. I mean, if 2,000 fans, I mean, how, 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 how do you feel as far as, like, filling that building up, like, if you saw 2,000 fans there? Uh, oh, oh, well, okay, so I went to the show on May 5th, and they announced a little over 2,000, and I thought it, 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 it felt packed in there, to be honest. Okay, so, uh, you know, maybe that it... I, I think as far as just seeing what Yokohama can do, I think a lot of it is just chairs being set up, um, you know, because... Yeah, I mean, the... it's big open spaces. What I'm talking about is more, is more like the lobby section, but you mean, yeah. The, yeah, the arena, it's big, wide open sections. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so they they announced 2,000 fans, which, again, you know, FMW would usually announce uh, 2,500 or would legitimately have 2,500, usually uh, up to 3,000 at the most. Um, but anyway, um, so some of the storylines here, again, um, it ends up being that Rika Fujisaki uh, and Shinjuku Shark – um, you know, they're in the ring with, with their child when uh, – with Fuyuki when um, – when the police come and they come to the ring and they show their badges and everything, and they would actually end up arresting Rika Fujisaki and Koto Fuyuki, saying, Rika Fujisaki stole this child and put a wig on it. This is not her child. She's just a, she's just a crazy person. And so she ends up getting arrested, and they arrest Fuyuki going, and Fuyuki, we have reason to believe that you helped her steal that baby. And so Fuyuki ends up getting arrested also, but ends up making it in time, comes, is out of time to do color commentator, uh, color commentating for the main event. So only a for, short time in jail for Fuyuki here. Um, Hito uh, would end up taking on Gasako Gashigawara uh, in a death match. They're, do, they're doing the light tubes at this point from Big Japan. Um, the big spot here is uh, uh, Gosako is about to uh, try and... Um, 
I believe Powerbomb Hito threw a uh, onto a light tube when BioMonster DNA comes out comes to the ring and ends up grabbing a light tube and smashing it over Gasako Gash- Gashigawa's head and that leads Hito to get the win. Um, I believe this is the last bit of BioMonster DNA. Um, you know that would be the end of the gimmick right there is just attacking the person he or who originally was him. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think of other. Okay, um, I I also I sorry I forgot about one other aspect of the WEW show back on August. Actually, was the Kanemura Kuroda match. Um, Fuki was really upset over Garuda joining WMF as well because wait, Fuki said I came up with that gimmick, and now he's gonna take that gimmick and do it elsewhere. Well, on the August 23rd show, going back to it. Um, Garuda, he has another guy, uh, Garuda's music plays at the Kanemura uh, Kuroda match, and it's a different guy in a mask, and um, he ends up attacking Kuroda, and he actually laid out Kuroda with a 450 Firebird splash, and Fuki announces, this is the real Garuda. That's not, not that other guy. This is a, the real Garuda, not Tamakazu Morita. So Garuda, the new the WEW Garuda, ends up making his debut here uh, with T- Dick to go, Masio Orohara. Uh, they team up against Gran Hamada, his daughter, Ayako Hamada, in High 69. Um, Ayako Hamada would end up getting the win over Garuda. Afterwards, uh, Garuda would take off the mask, and he would end up uh, going by the name UZ, so that gimmick is now over with. Um, and then um, Takashi Sasaki, Jintaro, they defeat Tomohiro Ish- uh, Ishii, uh, and TNR, number one, it's just this mass wrestling. I don't even remember who, or who, I don't even think I knew who it was, but it was a mass wrestler. Uh, Jintaro would end up getting the win over TNR. They're really establishing Sasaki and Jintaro as this tag team that is uh, making a lot of successful title defenses. Um, Shinjiro, Otani, and Kiragoi, uh, Wagida of uh, 0 1, they defeat Tetsuhiro Kuroda and Takamichi Noku when Otani defeated, uh, pinned Takamichi Noku. Uh, it's an okay match. Uh, the main event, this and this is probably the best. Um, uh, one of the best WEW matches. Uh, Masato Tanaka and takes on uh, Kentaro Kanemura for the WEW title. They brawl all over the building. Uh, they go to the sta- front of the stage. Uh, Kanemura begins climbing the front, like the entrance stay, uh, like the the entrance way. Uh, like wrestlers come out, there's a stage. Kanemura begins climbing it. Tanaka, uh, like he sets Tanaka on a table. Uh, Tanaka gets up, climbs up. Tanaka climbs up the stage also, so they're both climbing up. Uh, like Tanaka's going to try and suplex him. Well, Kanemura just ends up shoving him off, and talk, Tanaka falls into the table. Uh, um, like I said, they end up brawling. I, I mean, it is a really good match. Eventually, um, and again, Fuki going back um, to two days earlier, uh, Fuki's wearing a neck brace also during this whole show because uh, Fuki and Tanaka had gotten into a brawl at a zero one uh, show, and um, Fuki had tried was about to like hit a charging lariat on uh, Tanaka when um, the zero one guys would come and make the save for Tanaka, and Tanaka would end up gr- uh, grabbing a piece of table and smashing it over um, Fuki's head, and so Fuki would actually do like be taken to the ambulance for like really to sell Tanaka but also oh, hey he has cancer you know you just hit a man with cancer and so Fuki uh, goes to the hospital he's wearing a neck brace during this whole show and so he's really cheering uh, Kanemura on as um, Kanemura during the uh, Yokohama Bunker Gym Show he ends up setting a barbed wire bat on fire and the fire is ex- is it is a it's a legitimate fire here that bat is really catches on the fire is there's a lot of fire on that bat and, and uh Kanemura ends up power bombing Tanaka on the barbed wire bat and onto the fire and you can tell I mean Tanaka it really burnt Tanaka's shoulder up um he, he was in a lot of pain um he would end up still being able to kick out uh after Kanemura would pin him after hit, using the uh after power bomb him on the, into the fire, but um, Kanemura would end up eventually getting the win over Tanaka with the power bomb, um, defeating uh, Masato Tanaka for their big show. And so the end of the show, the big WW show, um, 
is Kanemura and all the uh, WEW guys doing the Team No Respect dance. Um, and, and just real quick, the, one, the real reason that WEW ran the show was, one, to have a big show, but two, also, that just was part of the norm of FMW. FMW always ran Yokohama Bunk, uh, the Bunker Gym Show in November. And so this was the big, you know, Fuki going, we're just going to kind of keep doing that and let's shoot for a big show. And like I said, they announced 2000, which I'm, I don't think is – you know, I mean, I think it's probably normal for what yeah, Big Japan does nowadays. But, I mean, back then, you know, you had shows, FMW or wherever, you know, uh, other promotions legitimately drawn 3,000, you know, more than just 2,000 or less. So, um, anyway, this was the big WEW show with Buki. Um, they would never run WE, uh, they would never run the Yokohama Bunker Gym show after this, though. All right. So, okay, so this is going to take us into December, <clears throat> excuse me, where um, uh, the, the first show that we're going to go over is going to be the, uh, uh, the debut at Kurokan Hall for WMF on December 12th. So if you want to go over that for us. Yeah, so they announced 1,700 at, uh, um, at the build at Corrigan Hall. And again, it's, you know, it's, it, it's not empty by any means. It's a good number, you know, or at least a good number for them. But it, there's definitely probably a lot of seats, you know, a lot of empty seats and everything. And that's got to be considered a disappointment considering this is the big show. Okay, the debut show was kind of a was kind of unsuccessful in the sense of it didn't sell out. Well, this is the big, you know, this is our WrestleMania show, our first Corrigan Hall show. Well, announced in 1700, probably not the best, but I mean, I don't think it was a financial loser by any means. Um, the main event is, or sorry, no, sorry, the very uh, beginning of the show is Hayabusa um, coming out. Uh, he's in the crowd and he is now going to walk for the first time. He, they, um, he's uh, rolled out on the wheelchair into the, in the middle of the crowd. He gets up, he has two canes and for the very first time in public, Hayabusa makes a couple steps at Corrigan Hall, the building that he had his injury in. Um, you know, he would improve a lot more. And I mean, I always thought it was kind of ironic that like 10, 10, 13 years later, there was a viral video of him walking. And a lot of people didn't know, like, oh, Hayabusa could finally walk. Well, it actually, he could walk a year later. Just, uh, you know, uh, he just needed two canes to be able to walk um, here after a year. But that's the big thing. And Hayabusa cuts this big promo. Um, you know, but it, it is a, a big moment. I mean, Hayabusa can walk. And, I mean, it, 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 at least considering the original diagnosis was bedridden for life, considering that right now he can walk with two canes is, is a really positive sign. And, again, he would improve as time went by. Um, just some, uh, like I said, I'll just go over some matches. Um, Ricky Fuji defeated Minio uh, Fujita. Fujita had earlier uh, debuted for WMF, the first WMF dojo wrestler. Um, he would end up uh, probably best known for Zero One, but um, and be a pretty good high flyer wrestler. But he's uh, just a rookie at this point. Uh, Ricky Fuji easily defeats him. Uh, Goemon and uh, Suki Kayo, who is a mass wrestler who has joined the brand Double Cross. Um, it's actually Tomo. Moya Hadashi. Um, they would defeat Flying Kadichihara and Asian Cougar. Um, Asian Cougar was an old uh, independent, like low independent mass wrestler. Uh, Goemon would end up getting the pin over Ichihara uh, for the win. Uh, Akita Khan, who was the former Happy Akita, an FNW Dojo student, he's changed his gimmick now um, to where he's like this big uh, fan, a Japanese wrestling fan. And so like, he has a Ribera's jacket, like a big souvenir collector. And he, uh, he takes on Stalker Ichikawa of, of Tori Yumon. Um, it's a comedy match. Both are comedy wrestlers. Eventually Akeda Khan, uh, uh, would end up getting the win and afterwards wanting Stalker Ichikawa's autograph after defeating him. Um, Aja Kong and Shafarita Asurai um, take on Kyoko Inoue and Emi Motokawa. Uh, this is Emi Motokawa's uh, return. She had a neck injury in FMW at the end. Um, and so this is her big return um, to the ring, taking up, teaming up with her uh, former partner in FMW Inoue. Uh, Aja Kong and, and Asurai would end up getting the win um, uh, over Inoue and Emi Motokawa. Kong would end up knocking Motokawa out uh, for the win. Uh, Dragon Kid um, would take on on Rio, and this was like promoted as this like, oh, this is gonna be this awesome high flying match. Dragon Kid's probably at the peak of popularity. He's doing moves you've never seen, like the Dragon Karana, you know, it just moves that were just like breathtaking in 2002. And then you have on Rio. He's known as this really good high flyer. This is gonna be this awesome dream match. Well, it goes about three minutes, and there's a spot where um, Andrio tries to kick. 
uh, like try to kick Dragon Kid for uh, the Unreal Clutch. Well, he ends up missing. Uh, Dragon Kid ends up doing this like flip to avoid the kick. Uh, Unreal ends up kicking um, the referee. And eventually, Unreal will get the Unreal Clutch, but the referee will be out of place because he got kicked by Unreal. So that ends up being a, you know, he ends up being a slow count as a result. Um, and then right away, Dragon Kid would end up doing like a, a, a Dragon Rana on um, Unreal or Hurricane Rana and getting the win like right away after three minutes. And you could see the fans just in shock, like their mouths open, like, that's it? three minutes and that's it. And you see fans actually start doing like the little hand signal of booing and you hear booing. They couldn't believe it was just three minutes. And they, they it looks kind of like they screwed up. Like, but I mean, just the way it went, it do, I mean, Unreal didn't even try to kick out. So I, it doesn't look like a screw up, but the way they act afterwards was like, we screwed up. But yeah, like it's just, you know, the referees like, it was three, it was three, matches over. And so I don't know if it's a political reason uh, over Tori Yuman making sure this match is short or an injury reason but the fans were not happy with this match being so short. Um, Jinsei Shinzaki uh, would take on Garuda. The, uh, at this point, they're kind of pushing Garuda as like he's going to take on all the legends and all the, the main wrestlers and lose until he finally gets his big push. Well, uh, so he takes on Garuda. Um, or sorry, he takes on Jinsei Shinzaki. Uh, Shinzaki kind of just lays him out. Um, he hits a praying power bomb and eventually rips off Garuda's mask to find to reveal that it is Tomokazu Morita. Um, and eventually, um, Jinsei Shinzaki would put him in the Nirvana strangle, and afterwards, uh, and the referee would stop the match to give the win to Jinzaki. Uh, Garuda would um, cut a promo with Hayabusa afterwards, wanting more challengers um, you know, from Hayabusa, the commissioner. And then uh, Mr. Ganesuke would take on Satoshi Kojima. Like I said, this was kind of the big outside name. Kojima at this point is probably at his peak of popularity um, after leaving New Japan to join up with Kijimuto in All Japan. Um, Kojima had a really good attitude about working with um, the FMW wrestlers. His old partner Tenzan did not have a good attitude about it, but Kojima had a good attitude and was willing to work with them all and, and sell and you know and I mean he was never going to lose to them but this is a good match and they really like they chop the hell out of each other and Ganesuke um really tries to you know sell like uh, I can uh, you can't you know you, whatever you put over you can't beat me um but eventually uh, c you know kicking out of a bunch of the lariats before finally Kojima would knock Ganesuke out with the lariat to get the win um and so Kojima gets the win over Ganesuke. They shake hands afterwards. Um, you know, so like I said, this was Ganesuke's kind of just thought process of, I, I have the young guys kind of be the main star, but I need to have like a top match because I, 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 I don't mind losing, but I need to help draw the show. So bringing in a Satoshi Kojima to have a dream match with me will help draw the show. And then the main event is uh, Mama Sasaki against uh, Tetsuhiro Kuroda. This is an awesome match. Um, probably best WMF match maybe ever but the um you know I mean they really put over Mammoth here uh Brand Double Cross ends up uh attacking Mammoth during this match going on um jumps uh, uh attacks uh, Mammoth Sasaki on the outside with the fork and cuts Mammoth Sasaki open so he's bleeding um he, uh, Mammoth Sasaki would end up being power bombed um, through a table off the stage, um, you know they really just go all out, just uh, doing everything they can to um, you know show that Mama Sasaki is willing to overcome everything. Um, like I said, they knock Mama Sasaki out, um, you know, but he just keeps kicking out of all these pinfalls. Um, eventually, um, Kuroda is now attacking them with a the chair, and they do the ch the chair spot. It actually worked a lot better because Kuroda is about to hit him with the chair. Mama Sasaki punches the chair and it goes the punch goes through the chair right into uh, to Kuroda's face um you know and again it, you know it's it, it is it's an awesome match um but the problem with this match is the ending, the ending which is Kuroda and Mammoth are, are at the very end it just seems like they're both dead and they both just punch each other at the same time and they both just fall to the ground at the same time and the referee counts 10 and uh, announces that the match is a double KO uh, so there is no winner, and again, that goes to the political aspects of bringing Kuroda from WEW. You're not going to have uh, Kuroda lose to a WMF guy, but you can't have Mammoth lose to uh, Kuroda here when you're—he's the big push, when he's you know going to be the ace. So 
as like I said, as a result, they do a double KO. Nobody wins. Uh, I mean, it's just really just so they're hoping that, you know, um, you know, the interference and getting Mama cut open and going through a table and just taking all this beating and kicking out and still being able to, um, you know, hang in there. You know, they're hoping that will get over, get Mammoth over to be the top star, even though they can't have him actually beat Kuroda. So uh, the final WMF show that we're going to talk about is going to be December 21st, if you want to go over that one for us. Yeah, they announced uh, – this was at the Sapporo Tyson Hall, and they didn't even announce a crowd here. So usually when a show is not um, – when there's no attendance announced, that's too embarrassing to even announce it. So there's not even an attendance listed for this show. Um, this show wasn't taped or filmed or anything like that, so – you just had to go off reports of what happened, which was the um, Mr. Ganesuke and Jin Seishinzaki. They took on Goemon and Tetsuhiro Kuroda, and this match would actually end up being. And this is Ganesuke's reason of okay, these shows aren't doing that well. Uh, I gotta, I gotta change things up. So he actually has uh, Ganesuke. He has himself turn on Jinzaki during this match. And Ganesuke turn and joins Brand Double Cross with Goemon. So Goemon and Ganesuke are attacking Jinsaki. Uh, Kuroda is like, what? What the hell is going on? And eventually, Go- Kuroda is like, I-, I want no part of this. If Ganesuke is a part of Brand Double Cross, no. And so Goemon and, and Ganesuke end up attacking Kuroda. And so, and the whole brand double cross come out and attack. Referee just throws the match out. So now Kuroda is now going to be the face, and Ganosuke is going to be the heel and the leader of brand double cross, and t- along with Goemon. Um, and then again, they just had Mama Sasaki defeat Garuda. They're like I said, uh, you know, this match isn't filmed, so I never saw it. Or, or um, but uh, Mammoth would again get uh, get the win over Garuda. Um, you know, they're just really kind of pushing, like I said, Garuda as he's going to take on all the guys and he's going to lose because uh, his day will come eventually. You know, he'll be the ace one day, but he's not. He's only two years in. He's not ready. Mammoth is the ace now. He's the top guy. He needs the win. He needs to, you know, get another win after especially not being able to defeat Kuroda, but it having to be just kind of a screw job, double KO finish. We need to get Mammoth over strong. So he's going to defeat Garuda again. So, again, Mammoth's going to be the top face. Uh, Ganesuke now going into the year is going to be the top heel, and Kuroda is going to be a face as well, but he's just going to be kind of a second tier since he's not even really a WMF guy anyway. Okay, so that's going to take us to our final WEW show, which is going to be on uh, December 27th. Yeah, so um, around this time period, uh, Fuki had decided that he was wanted to feud with uh, Shinya Hashimoto. We'll go over to that in, in a second, just with the layers that it took. But um, so Fuki does an angle at the Zero One show, or uh, sorry, before a Zero One show, and there's like you see Zero One guys training and um, in the ring, and Hashim and Fuki come, you know, uh, co- goes up to uh, Hashimoto, and they're talking, and and Fuki ends up walking away. Well, eventually. All the guys, uh, the WEW guys, show up and start attacking Hashimoto, and as and during this process, then Fuki comes back and he attacks uh, Hashimoto, and so they're all attacking Hashimoto, and then they make a break for it and they steal the PWF Universal Tag Titles outside the re- uh, building because now the Zero One guys have all been distracted. So the WEW guys have the um the PWF Universal Tag Titles that Otani and Tanaka had won while touring in Pennsylvania earlier in the year. Uh, and so uh Kyuki refuses to give the titles back um until unless Kanemura or sorry unless Tanaka and Otani can defeat Kanemura and Oraha for them. And so that's the main thing here um this show was not taped. Um, again, Z- Samurai TV dropped uh, WEW after the Yokohama show, so um, they would they didn't have Samurai TV for several months around this time period. Um, and anyway, um, I mean, just so I don't I don't know how well some of these matches were, but you know, Dick to go, Hakuda uh, Adaka and Hito defeated Takashi Sasaki, Jintaro, and Ryuji Ito, who was a um, three-year veteran in Big Japan at this point. They're um, you know they're working with Big Japan also in a smaller dose. You know, Hito's working Big Japan, Kanemura's working Big Japan, so but some of the Big Japan guys are willing to work uh, WEW. 
Um, but the main event is Shinjiro Otani and Masato Tanaka taking on Kintaro Kanemura and, and Masio Orohara. Um, Otani would end up getting the win over Orohara during this match. Like I said, I, it wasn't taped, so I don't know how well this match was. But Otani would end up getting the win over Orohara, and so they would end up successfully defending the PWF Universal Tag Titles and taking back the titles from uh, the WEW side. All right, and then uh, finally, on uh, December 29th, uh, 01, they ran a show, if you want to go over that one. Yeah, so we went just um, we just went over how Fuyuki attacked Hashimoto. Well, so here's the thing. Fuyuki wants a match with, ha- with Hashimoto at Kawasaki Stadium in May 5th. Fuyuki knows he's dying. He wants to come out of retirement and have a match with Hashimoto, and he wants it to be an exploding barbed wire match. He knows... He's not going to live much longer. So if he can get through, he knows he's in such bad condition that he's going to die in the ring. And that's what he wants. He wants to die in the ring against Hashimoto. So he sets up a match with Hashimoto, this long-term plan, to lead to Kawasaki Stadium, Fuyuki versus Hashimoto. Hashimoto agrees to it. So to set this match up, they have Kanemura versus Hashimoto to kind of begin, really kind of, get this view going. So Zero One holds a show at uh, Corrigan Hall on December 29th. Ha- uh, Kanemura comes to the ring with Fuyuki. Uh, Hashimoto you know, is coming out, and all the WEW guys jump uh, Hashimoto. Hito, Shinjuku Shark, Kuroda, they're all laying uh, Hashimoto out. Um, Fuyuki grabs Hashimoto and lays him on a table. Kanemura, quick, put him through the table. Kanemura, qu- qu- as quick as can be, jumps on the top rope and sends Hashimoto through the table they bring in Hashimoto into the ring and start attacking uh, Hashimoto you know Kanemura starts laying him out with a barbed wire bat Kuroda comes in and interferes hits the lariat you know they're doing everything they can to try and help Kanemura beat Hashimoto Hashimoto is not going to sell much for Kanemura here and it takes all these guys to try and knock him out and and even then it's still not enough by the time you know it, they can't put Hashimoto away when Hashimoto finally gets on offense he starts laying Kanemura out with Kicks and they are hard kicks. He busts Kanemura's lip open. Kanemura is bleeding in the uh, from the lip all over because of how hard Hashimoto is kicking the crap out of him. So these are, you know, Hashimoto is only going to sell if you knock, have ten guys attack him, and then when it's one on one, eventually Hashimoto is going to kick the crap out of Kanemura. He's not going to sell much for Kanemura, and so. Eventually, uh, Hashimoto would much get a squash win over Kanemura. Um, Fuyuki afterwards um, would, uh, you know, like I said, this is to set up Hashimoto, Fuyuki uh, down the line. They're, you know, Fuyuki wants this match at Kawasaki Stadium. He wants to come out of retirement one last match. He knows he doesn't have much time to live, and he's going to die in the ring at Kawasaki Stadium as his dream. Do uh do people know that his health is this bad? I don't think they know it's this bad, but they know he has cancer. They know, you know, they don't know because I mean, I'll go off how much knowledge I knew at this time, which is what you know I I was pretty I was covering all this stuff at this time. I didn't know how bad it was this time because he's still doing storylines. He's still taking angles, you know, or doing angles. He's still you know getting the he- hit in the head with uh, a table by Tanaka, um, you know, and also during this match. I mean, he took uh, sorry after the end of this match, uh, Fuyuki actually goes over to Ken. Kanemura, you know, to cover his body, and Ken, Hashimoto starts kicking uh, Fuyuki, and Fuyuki really starts selling those kicks also as, like, their deadly, you know, um, shots to him. So they don't know how bad it is. Nobody knows how bad it is. You know, nobody knows. He's going to die soon. Um, he, like I said, he, he talked to Hayabusa, and he thought he was going to be dead at this point by the end of the year. What happened was Fuyuki decided he didn't want to do chemo. He did that long uh, surgery to try and get the cancer removed back in, like, April. It really wasn't a success. They couldn't get it all out. It was back. He didn't want to do chemo. He didn't want to just live in the hospital, lose all his hair. He he tried a different type of method, um, type of this medication and these these ointments and um, just kind of, like, uh, just this different strategy. I'd have to, like, kind of look it up. But, I mean, some people do this um, as a different alternative route to um, – to cancer instead of chemo, I know um, Andy Kaufman. He, he, you know, he tried this type of method of just trying a different uh, type of, uh, you know, of medication and ointments and different, um, you know, just 
going to, to people with possibly, you know, different powers, um, you know, to try and get rid of this cancer. He just didn't want to go through chemo. And I mean, as a result, he's got, he dies faster as a result. Now he probably would say, I'd rather be doing this and just die faster than just be put in, you know, chemo and living in a hospital and just die slowly with cancer. So this was what Fiyuki did. And, you know, again, he wants to die in the ring. Um, he wants to, you know, he wants to go out his way, and this is his way. So at at the moment, nobody really knows he doesn't have that much longer to live because nobody really knows. Fuki's, hey, you know, trying a different method that's going to lead to him dying faster. All right. Yeah, Um. I remember, you know, so people know he's going to, you know, he's going to pass away relatively soon. And uh, when it happened, I... I, I was kind of shocked because I, I was following the news uh, through through your site and stuff, and I thought his condition was improving when he passed away. It was, it, you know, it was pretty shocking. Um, so, okay, um, so real quick, so to talk about some kind of end-of-the-year the uh, questions, between WEW and WMF, how would you rank the su success of the two different companies? Um, I would say neither one of them really were a success. WMF, um, you know, they were more successful in the sense of they're running shows, you know, at Corrigan Hall. Their Corrigan Hall shows are doing, you know, that one Corrigan Hall show did better than any WEW Corrigan Hall show did. Um, you know, they didn't lose money at Yokohama Bunker Gym like WEW probably did. Um, you know, they're not running as big of a buildings or running as, as often, but WMF, you know, just a little bit of touring that they did made them realize, oh, we can't, we can't tour, we can't run, uh, you know, we can't run regular 1,000 seat buildings. And so WMF, um, they actually started around November. They started running at the uh, Taka, uh, Taka Nosuka Battlesphere, um, which is just this random little small building in like just this little uh, com community. Um, and it's kind of what Shinkiba First Ring would end up becoming uh, uh, eventually after, you know, all the promotions would start running this little building. And then after it closed, everyone went to Shinkiba. Um, but at this time, the Battle Sphere is going to be the new small 300-seat uh, uh, building that all the promotions, all the low indie promotions run once a month. And so that's what WMF is doing. And so they're already kind of establishing themselves as this low-end promotion. You know, r r pretty much they're establishing that they're not going to be FMW. You know, they're uh, they're going to run a Corrigan Hall show every three months, but they, they can't afford to run a Corrigan Hall show every month. Fuki tried running a Corrigan Hall show every month, and as a result, they started losing money. Um, so at this point, both are not doing that well. WMF, like I said, is trying to handle it better than uh, the WEW did because they're not running as big of buildings. But, you know, as a result, it hurts their image of being, you know, a small promotion. So WMF is probably losing less money, but W uh, but WEW is probably known as the bigger promotion. Even though they're losing more money, they're still running bigger buildings. Now, WEW going into 2003 would actually run some successful shows here, and we'll talk about it next episode, because of, sadly, Fuyuki's passing actually helped them financially for a little bit, or and, you know, just his, um, the, a couple shows there after Fuyuki right before Fuyuki died and after he died. So those shows actually did pretty well, but um, WMF, though, um, they're about to hit um, some hard times in, in 2003 also. And uh, one other guy, I've got to ask, what was Onita doing throughout the rest of the year? So um, he, I talked about this um, two episodes ago or so. Um, he had planned, uh, he had went, went to Afghanistan uh, to meet with the, the children and give them color books. He wanted to be this ambassador for world peace because Afghanistan was getting attacked by America after Af Afghanistan had attacked America. And so he wanted to be this peacemaker and give coloring books to children. And he said, I want to have a match. He, you know, I want to have a show here for the, uh, for the children. And so um, uh, Onita would end up showing up in Kabul, Afghanistan and on September 27th. You know, again, he has the po uh, political power to be able to go there. And he ends up running a show um, at uh, a three match show in Afghanistan on September 27th. He brought pro wrestling to Afghanistan. And so him, uh, Ichiro Yaguchi, they would just end up having tag matches. They had three different matches. Um, 
uh, where they would take on to two other uh, Afghanistan uh, Afghanistan uh, males, um, and they would ha um, they. They had a reporter uh, from Japan come with them to take to document it and everything. Um, he would actually Onita would have him have to be the referee for the match. Um, they obviously didn't have a ring, so they would just use mats and uh, gymnastic poles. Um, you know, like I said, they would end up having the guy have a referee be um, one of the Tokyo sports uh, guys covering it, and they would just have three matches over and over and over, just tag matches with Onita and Yaguchi against um, two Afghanistan um, boys. So, uh, you know, again, Onita is so proud of this. I actually didn't even know this really happened until Onita did an uh, interview not too long ago, um, because I it wasn't really it's not really documented that well. Um, this, you know about this or, or anything like that so uh but onita did a, uh an interview a couple of weeks ago where he was he was talking about how proud he is that this happened and so this is a you know he's really happy that he was able to put this together even though obviously it's not you know the the best you know the best conditions as far as uh you know actually even having a ring or anything like that it's just mats and poles um but you know onita wanted to bring wrestling to these children with and bring happiness to them because he saw what they were going through and just the living conditions that they were going through uh during this time period all right well that's gonna do it for 2002 on the next show we're gonna head into two to 2003 and um there's going to be way more companies, that's all. Um, so, real quick, before we leave, uh, Onita, he had his comeback match, and there's a lot of Onita news. So, um, I'll just let you kind of go over it. What's he, you know, what's he doing at the moment? So, he has officially come back. Uh, um, we talked about how he's probably going to come back um, a couple of episodes, episodes ago. Um, he has that passion. You know, he right now is just kind of, he is just, sitting there in Kanazaki in his hometown being a farmer and he just kind of missed wrestling and he figured he could do it again. Um, he's not going to run a full-time schedule. So he worked the, the 18 promotion um, on October 28th. Um, it was an exploding uh, double hell death match. So, I mean, there was pretty good explosions that they used for this big show for them. I mean, it's a 500 seat building, but they used um, exploding. Um, they, used explosions they used the exploding barbed wire bat um onita would obviously get the win at the end over um one of the a team uh preliminary guys um afterwards um onita has announced that or um that he wants well he announced that he's going to be a volunteer pro wrestler and so the whole thing was i'm not a professional wrestler i'm a volunteer wrestler so i am not getting paid by these companies to do wrestling to, to wrestle i am just here because i love it i want to do it i want to make the fans happy now i'm now he's announced also that he's going to be tour or he's going to be wrestling in america and europe uh, he's going to appear at the Spring Break show in April, uh, the Joey Janela Spring Break show in New Jersey um, for uh, for Game Changer Wrestling. Now, and he'll be wrestling in Europe in January. Um, now, he has stated that um, due to laws, he can't uh, wrestle, and it's just his words, he can't wrestle for free uh, do, um, in uh, foreign countries. So he is going to get paid in America and Europe. Um but so I mean, but it's something right now. It's just he wants to do something. He wants to just do it. He's not going to wrestle full time. Um, the next show he'll be on is December. Uh, he'll because he's in Kanazaki, so he's like four hours away from Tokyo. So he won't even wrestle in anywhere um, in Tokyo in, or anywhere in November. He'll wrestle December second for the new Stardom Idols promotion. Um, the uh, you know he'll he's going to wrestle um, in a he's going to have a couple tag partners against uh, Tarzan Yamamoto who is the former uh, pro wrestling weekly editor uh, who's not a wrestler by any means um, but he has he's a celebrity in ja in wrestling in Japanese wrestling circles um, they're going to have a um, death match on uh, Action Kiba um, so like I said he's not going to run wrestle regularly um, he you know he's going to want to wrestle matches he wants to he's not going to do the same old matches over and over you know just the same old six mans he's gonna want to have matches that he just wants to he wants to go to america he wants to go to europe he wants to wrestle a a uh, magazine editor that was really uh, a big name when uh he was you know a big fmw wrestler it'd be like wrestling bill after i mean essentially that's what it would be like you know just to have mainstream or you know some notoriety news attention he doesn't want to wrestle just he's not going to tour or wrestle just random matches he wants to do what he wants to do and that's going to be wrestle celebrities and wrestle in different countries 
Um, fantastic. So, okay, uh, with that, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for listening. Um, we didn't cover it before, so Brett, where can people find you online? You can find me at uh, bahufnw.com. Uh, That's where I go over all the news. I have pictures and biographies, results. Um, I sell DVDs, uh, freedoms, um, and F old FMW tapes. Uh, everything that you can think of, I have collected over the last 20 years and put it on the website. Uh, I also have a Instagram, Bahu FMW Worlds, where I will go through picture magazines. I have too many magazine, Japanese wrestling magazines, and I'll just go through pictures uh, and post them every so often of FMW and related FMW promotions. Uh, Bahu FNW on Twitter, where I um, just covering anything breaking or any news right away. I'll post it on Twitter, and then uh, on YouTube, uh, Brett FNW, where I post uh, music videos and I post uh, videos of everything we're covering uh, on these episodes. Fantastic, and uh, you can find me online. I have a website, indywrestlingintl.wordpress.com. I do a semi-weekly uh, deathmatch newsletter where I talk about, you know, GCCW and uh, news from America, Japan, Mexico, England. I get all kinds of people sending me stuff, and I just collect it into one place. I'm on Twitter, at INTL Wrestling, and thank you guys for listening. <laughs>